whatever, whatever you expect, it's not going to be it, I promise. Uh, right, so, yeah. Uh, very, very briefly, I'll talk about how it all started, what EGX is, and in, in general, what we do. Uh, many, many years ago, three years ago, uh, we had an idea of uh, building uh, something that we've seen a, an empty niche in the space. Uh, my experience, my background is in tech, but also I used to trade, and uh, the, it's, my, it's my home turf, so I've, I know how to identify a problem when I see one. And the problem that we, we've identified, the problem we've seen is, when we talk about DeFi in general, or any decentralized exchanges, it's, it's difficult. The, it's always, you always have problems with uh, UX, it's, it's cumbersome, it's not, it's not ideal in comparison with central exchanges or normal TradeFi. The assets offering within the DEX and DeFi is general tricky, but also on-ramping and off-ramping is, is super tricky because well, that's DeFi. And also for initial users, for DJs, for original users and traders, the decentralization is one of the key decisions in terms of where they want to go, where they want to trade. And if it's, you think, just an empty, empty words, we've seen what happened with FTX. Um, everyone thinks that blockchain is decentralized, everything that if you say DeFi or DEX, it's decentralized, but it's not. Uh, at the same time, when we work in the trading, the AMM models are okay-ish for some retail users, but when we talk about institutional investors or high-frequency trading because of the slippage, because of the liquidity issues, that's always a problem. Uh, on top of that, um, now I think everyone recognizes the, the importance of self-custody. I don't think it was important for everyone else a few years ago, but now everyone knows. And in general, DEXs and DeFi, we will always say that we are too early in this space, but DeFi and DEX are, for a very long time, used to be almost like a, a toy, rather than in comparison with Stratify or Central Exchanges. So, three years ago, we identified that there might be a solution that we want to try on, uh, and the initial, initial idea for ZKX was that we want to build the decentralized limit order book. And I will explain a few things here. Decentralized, because it has to be decentralized. Limit order book, because that's the only way to trade without massive slippage, and no institutional investor will ever trade on the AMM, uh, on scale. The, um, it has to be uh, multi-assets, so not your traditional uh, crypto, not your traditional uh, chain pairs. It might be uh, real world assets, it might be something, something new. Um, the UX has to be on par with big boys. So we talk blockchain, we talk Binance. The UX of typical Binance interface is incomparable with uh, any, any, any DEX or sort of DeFi. And I'm not talking about UI, I'm talking about UX, the experience you have to go through in order to start trading. The, um, what else? High frequency trading, you talk uh, on chain, you talk blocks, not really possible, but it has to be there if you want to compete with traditional uh, exchanges. Obviously, the initial idea for us was to build everything under the governance of uh, DAO because uh, we want to build a protocol that can just fly without us. That was our perceived solution for the problem. So, what exactly we had to have? We have to be trustless. Trustless means that whenever you trade, whenever you have your funds, you don't need to trust to provide it to a platform to, to exchange. You have to rely on something that's trustless, decentralized. Whatever you do, it's not a server that someone can plug in, plug out, switch off, throw away. So it has to be decentralized in a way that no one is in full control of, of, of the system, of what's going on in the system. Permissionless here means that if we work in, in DeFi space and we say that we are actually decentralized finance, it means that any trader can say, well, you have these 50 assets, but I want to bring something new. So the things that are happening with the platform, they have to be permissionless. So anyone can bring something on the platform and everyone can start trading on that. And it comes with the additional requirements of limit order book. So it's very clear what we, what we want to have. Um, and then 2021, we've hit a massive wall. What do we want to have? We know exactly what we need to, uh, what we need to, to do. We need to have decentralized 
permissionless limit audiobook. But when you work with audiobooks, they have to be fast. Decentralization is not always fast. You have issues even with basic things like reputation, because there is trust issue, there is basic execution. So idea in, in principle is great. Let's do Binance, but in, in truly decentralized DeFi way. The idea is brilliant. The, the, the problem that the tech did not exist still doesn't exist. What I mean here is smart contracts. Let's say, let's start with smart contracts. We want to do the high frequency trading. In principle, you have smart contracts. But if we work in traditional ones, the smart contracts won't give you required density of trades. The block meeting time or the limitations, not really possible. Then we've figured out that, well, potentially L2 is a good idea for us. So we start building on StarkNet. It has better, um, better UX in terms of the transactions, lower cost, which is again important if you want to be full on chain. So good start, smart contracts, let's tick the box, kind of all right. The limited computation. Um, when you work with, um, why, why most of the DEXs have very limited amount of assets? Because if you bring a new asset, you cannot guarantee the liquidity of this asset, but you also you can guarantee the volatility of this new asset, which means that traditional things like, uh, for example, funding rate, won't be sufficient in order to calculate these new assets. But if you say, well, fundamentally, we are permissionless, which means a asset, which means that some assets won't fit within the funding rate uh, criteria, which means that we need to bring something new and we need to do a lot of calculation for this new asset. But also we say, well, it's not AMM, it's decentralized limit order book. Limit order book has a lot of data, has a lot of matching, a lot of computation that simply either doesn't fit into the paradigm of normal systems, or it will be super expensive because, well, imagine putting every position on chain. First of all, you won't be like that community because you can blow the, the, the on chain, but on top of everything, that's generally not a good idea. And the last but not least, everything that you work with today, a part of smart contracts, is actually not decentralized. That's a big statement, but think about it. Indexers, RPCs, are they decentralized? Do we know any, anything that is truly decentralized about those smart contracts? Frontend is, to some extent, uh, even React, you can compile the static files, you can run the static files, but anything that needs a calculation is, is not decentralized. So if you build something right now that requires a backend, it will be centralized. If you work with any third party provider, it will be centralized. So even when you say, well, every DeFi is decentralized, realistically speaking, there is always a third party provider that sits somewhere on AWS at some server that can be switched off. So effectively, it makes your system not really decentralized. So that was the, the state of the, uh, of the ecosystem in 2021. And then we start building. That was roughly two and a half years ago. Uh, what, what have we started with? Um, trustless, permissionless, and decentralized application layer. We need to have lots of calculation, lots of computation. It needs to be proof somewhere, so we've decided that it should sit on top of the uh, StarkNet. Uh, we need a lot of computation power, and we need to have some, here I use word off-chain as something that is not executed in traditional on-chain, like L1 and also I'll explain what I mean later. But again, we need to have ability to computate something that doesn't sit within the traditional L1 and L2. Also, you want to have public setup for the trading. Sometimes you want to have a private setup for the trading. So these were the, the initial agenda for the engineering team, for the business, for everyone. And then we start building. What exactly? That was the initial idea of the architecture we've decided to introduce and we've decided to, to build. On the base layer, we have StartNet as our single source of truth, as the way where we store the data, where we have the liquidity. On top of that, it has the ZKX upchain. Uh, again, I'll talk about upchain a bit later. On top of that, on top of ZKX upchain, we have decentralized limit order book. We have uh, different data layers. Because again, if you say that you're permissionless and you want to be able to bring any type of assets to your trading platform, it is very difficult to trade without a price. I've tried, not easy. If you need to bring a price for a new asset, it means that you need to procure this data somewhere. 
Normally, it is norm you use a data oracle, but when it's unknown asset, even with, when it's known asset, it's difficult because, again, two years ago, we came to Chainlink and said, guys, we want to have access to every asset. That, well, it's not really possible because that's not what we provide on chain. And for assets that we do provide, that we want to provide for you, it will take two, three months. So arbitrary data procurement doesn't exist. On top of that, we need to have the some uh, governments because again, we are ideally fully driven by uh, DAO. And because we sit on the Starknet, somehow we need to have the liquidity bridge between different networks and Starknet. And um, Starkway, our, that's our universal L1 to L2 bridge. Apart of Starkway, there is only one official uh, bridge on Starknet, only supports ETH and USDC. We are universal bridge and we have to build a universal bridge. Why? Again, because it can be any asset that you might want to trade. And on top of that, you have for, for DJs, you have MetaMask, for L1, you have uh, Argentex and Bravos for L2, but all, also you have what we call a ZKX account. That is the integrated uh, account abstraction account that sits on top of ZKX and gives you access to everything you do in the system. And then we've started building and releasing. We've started with a uh, release of the adaptive balancing rate. That is the our version of funding rate, and then and then again we launched the test net uh, in March this year. We had a little over sixty five thousand traders. Uh, we've generated one point two billion. Um, demonstrated very good TPS in the system, and then we released again with the ZKX account, and then again we've uh, announced the uh, up chain. So two years of building something, 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 and. Through these two years, we have been talking, we've given these talks about ZKX and up chains and uh, ability to DeFi and DEX. And we've talked and we've talked and we've talked and we've talked. And the thing is that every time when I'm on stage explaining how we, what we've decided to do and how we do this, every time we have someone coming to us and saying, whoa, that's super cool. You, I, I want this as well. Can, can I have it? Because I want to be decentralized. So I want to have uh, something that is not centralized. I want to have my, I have a game uh, and I just basically, I want to have the front end that is decentralized. So I want to have the, the image generation that is decentralized. Can I have it? Or, well, there is like, I know these guys, they really want to be, the protocol completely run by DAO, but it's not possible because if they leave, the, no one will pay bills for the AWS. So it will die and, what do we do? And it's always AWS, and it's always Google Cloud and, and everything else. And effectively, every DeFi we have right now, they are, in one way or another, actually are centralized. So the title of this talk is Decentralization. Because on the paper, on the surface, everything is decentralized by, by default. But realistically speaking, nothing is. And this is a problem. And smart contracts is only part of that. So for these two and a half years, we always been talking about this problem. We always been building, and we always had developers coming to us and highlighting that it's not just us. It's I'm not being mental. It's not me trying to build something that no one actually needs. It's apparently a well recognized problem. However, when I said that DeFi is not fully decentralized and nothing decentralized, I had a few smirks in, in the audience here because they by default reactions. Yeah, everything is decentralized. Uh, so, at some point, we have realized that maybe there is a bigger picture. And uh, we had a new problem that we managed to define that's dependency on uh, centralized cloud computing, uh, like AWS, like Google, uh, is known and well recognized within the community. It's no one really talking about, but it is, does truly, truly limit whatever, everything that happens with the DApps and in general with within the blockchain. At the same time, Ethereum and variation of have fundamental limitations in terms of what can you compute. It's either impossible or it's prohibitively expensive. If you put any intense computation, it's just not doable. On top of that, if you need to work with big data like Audible, or you want to build a data lake for analysis for your tailwinds for the prices of assets, it's not actually possible. And this is really mind-boggling. 
Because we live in a world where everything is possible, and if there is a niche of the requirement, it will be served. There's the demand and, and supply. Yet the industry for cloud computing is six hundred million dollars globally per year. And yet we have AWS, we have Google Clouds, and we have no alternatives to that. I'm not even talking about like energy persistence and, and, and stuff like that. It's just it's just not there. So the solution we, we propose is a verifiable uh, cloud computing that is shared uh, between different participants that will utilize it. The results uh, are validated and verified with, with CK proofs. Um, effectively, we're trying to extend the Ethereum to become, to, to have a layer for Ethereum where you can compute and store the big data. So now what we do, and that shouldn't be my business because my business is defined DEXs, right? Now what we do, we're building a, th a thing where we're trying to build a, a new role of architecture that will provide verifiable uh, cloud computing uh, for any decentralized applications for Ethereum, right? We're trying to use the ZK proving for that to verify computation. Um, and effectively, we want to give developers a uh, way to scale their solutions and to have something to replace AWS Lambda or, or GCP. And we want to give something that can be run on permissions clients so anyone can come, run the nodes, and then this will be created in a fully, completely decentralized and permissionless way. So ultimate goal is to have something where you can run arbitrary computation, any, any arbitrary computation, any sort of application can, can run it with this set of parameters. Um, there are three, three, three things. We obviously have the computation, we have consensus, or we have proving, uh, and we have two and a half minutes left somehow. So I'll try to be either, I'll try to stay here for another hour. I'm really sorry. In, in general, three things are computation, consensus, proving. Computation, cross network computation supports verification of results. We have the multiple probable computation as an option, so you can run massive computation on top of the system. Consensus here used for, we, we have our own house uh, consensus built on top uh, of, not on top, but it's our take at, at draft. So leader selection uh, that basically prefers to have the, the, the past leaders. Um, we have ZK proofs to store either within our system or, or outside of it. The overall architecture is relatively simple. You have requests to either from L1 or from any L2. It gets to the node network. It is taken by the dispatcher. Dispatcher node and dispatcher cluster are defined in the dynamic way for every epoch. You have the nodes that do the computation. This computation is provided back to the uh, consensus nodes. They are validated, verified, and put back to the re original requester as well as the internal internal network. I have no idea what's happening this time. So I'll be. All right, good. So, in general, what we're trying to do is we're trying to build something that would enable every application to be truly decentralized and permissionless. We're trying to create, if ZKX, in my mind, is competing with Binance, and I'm, I'm not sure they know that, but in my mind we do, because it's so interesting to compete with, with just the DeFi. We want to have the same experience as, as big boys. Then this thing, kind of trying to replace AWS and GCP in, in a very interesting and weird way. But if, if we succeed, then basically we'll have a layer where any application, RPCs, indexes, front-ends, some computation for the uh, any type of containerization can run in the way where it's sensor persistent and it's permissionless. And it's important because obviously we, we privileged to be here where we can work with any data. But there are lots of places where it is limited either by the governments or by the framework or by the legal structure or what not for. So why I'm here? Because I believe that it is possible to do it and I believe that the thing that we are creating now became bigger than ZKX itself. ZKX is a, it's a good business. It's a, it's a good, there's still 20 minutes to run, don't worry. Um, ZKX is a good business and we continue to build ZKX and there are lots of things and the roadmap is massive. But I believe that the thing we're trying to create for the computation there is, is even bigger. And we are looking for co-founders. And that's a twist. That's no one expected. I'm not here to 
push ZKX, ZKX doing all right. I'm here to talk about the problem we have, to talk about the solution we have. And I want to say that, guys, if you think that this is important, if you think that decentralization, central persistence, ability to run any application this way is important, if you think that this potentially might do next wave of apps, but what's even more important, it will give the power, computation power to unlock blockchain for the next one billion of users, probably one billion of users, then maybe there's one thing that needs to be done. And I believe that it is doable because, well, when you set your eyes on, on, on targets, everything is doable. So if you think it's interesting for you, if you think there is some in it, I know we only had 20, I think it's like, what, five minutes, but if you think there is something that you might be interested in, if you have interest in digitalization, in permissionless, in computation, please do talk to me. Email, Twitter, whatever. You know me probably as it packs with you in any never mind so stuck uh, groups. Um, yeah, I think that it needs to be done and hopefully it will be done. Thank you.